Wealthy parents are giving up custody of their kids to get cheaper college tuition. During their junior or senior year, parents are putting their children under the care of a friend, an aunt, a grandparent, and that change in guardianship allows students to declare themselves financially independent of their families and qualify for federal, state, and university financial aid. That's per a ProPublica report that found around 40 families in affluent Lake County near Chicago had chosen this unconventional method to make sure their children wouldn't have to pay astronomical amounts of tuition. The parents involved were lawyers, doctors, and other high-earning careers who were parents of high-achieving students. But of course, the outrageous expensive college tuition puts it out of reach for even many high-earning parents. The cost of tuition has skyrocketed for years and keeps increasing. And now 34%, more than a third of young people who aren't enrolled in college, say it's simply because they cannot afford it. Meanwhile, the national student debt load is inching up toward $2 trillion. And that's because the convoluted process of even qualifying for financial aid is often impossible even for low-income students. I myself am a perfect example of this. I was raised by a single mother who was a secretary, and I received a single $500 grant for college because my mom supposedly made too much money as a secretary. But to put a finer point on it, for the current academic year, the threshold to be considered unable to pay anything for a child's college tuition was a household income of $29,000, which means a household making $30,000 is considered able to at least contribute something, which is absurd. That's barely above the poverty line. But crucially, even if you do meet that $29,000 threshold, it doesn't mean that your college will just be free. So if the system is this absurd even for the poor, it's not that hard to imagine that even doctors and lawyers have trouble swinging tuition nowadays. Still, Still, some university officials like Andy Borst, director of undergraduate admissions at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, say that parents resorting to surrendering custody of their kids is nothing short of a scam in which wealthy parents take money from kids who actually need it. That's probably at least partly true, and it's inarguable that the optics are terrible, particularly in our post-Operation Varsity Blues era. But while the ethics and morality of these schemes are definitely debatable, what isn't is the fact that if college weren't so insanely expensive, often needlessly so, given even many public institutions billion-dollar hedge fund-like endowments, people wouldn't even have to think about going to these lengths in the first place. A young woman was accepted by Yale and Columbia despite only having a 3.8 GPA and a 1390 SAT score, both well below the usual Ivy League threshold. So how did she do it? TikToker Lemmy Talks made a video about how this young woman pulled it off, and it underlines just how truly stacked the odds really are when it comes to college admissions. In this case, she got into Yale and Columbia because she had one credential her competitors didn't, a letter of recommendation from her country's president. Well, that's certainly one way to stand out. So if you're in a similar pickle, don't worry about it. Just have old Joe Biden call up and put a good word in for you. Easy peasy. But while this story may be absurd and infuriating, it's certainly not surprising. Several studies have shown that privilege, you know, like being a legacy or being cozy enough with a world leader to get them to write you a letter of recommendation is one of the biggest keys to getting into the so-called Ivy Plus schools, which are more than twice as likely to admit students from a wealthy background as working or middle class students. And studies have also shown that legacy students are usually no more qualified than their non-legacy counterparts, suggesting that it is purely privilege alone getting them into these schools. We hear about way overqualified students with better credentials getting rejected by the Ivy Leagues all the time after all. And this situation is likely to only get worse in the future. Given the Supreme Court's recent decision to hobble affirmative action practices that helped level the playing field in college admissions. There are a few institutions, notably Wesleyan University, who have responded to this by abolishing legacy admissions altogether, which is great and hopefully more schools follow suit. But until then, unless you've got the president on speed dial, well, it's pretty much best of luck to the rest of us. A teenager is upset that her parents won't pay for college, despite making $320,000 a year. The 17-year-old named Haley called into the Dave Ramsey show, saying that she'd received some scholarships that brought her tuition down to 30 grand a year. But that's still a six-figure degree. But her very well-off parents have just bought a vacation home and are planning to retire in the next few years. So they're not willing to chip in her education. So Haley asked Ramsey for advice on getting student loans because her parents' high income means she doesn't qualify for financial aid. Ramsey found it absurd that parents who can afford a vacation vacation home would allow their child to sink six figures in debt for an education, calling it a screwed up value system, and urging Haley to find a different school she could go to where she wouldn't have to take on debt. Ramsey's advice is often controversial, of course, and full disclosure, I'm not one who usually agrees with him. But in this case, I gotta go Team Ramsey. Teaching your kids the value of a dollar and how to pay their own way in life is vitally important. But Haley's situation butts up against another very real problem in America right now. Not only is college exorbitantly expensive, but the value of a college degree has been steadily 
declining for years. Partly this is because so many more people have degrees nowadays, but it's also because of the way the job market has changed, where even many low-rung entry-level jobs require a master's degree, but certainly don't pay like it. This puts young people in a situation where they often can't even get their foot in the door without an elite degree or two, leaving them carrying six figures worth of debt for a degree that often won't even get them a job that pays enough to pay off the debt from getting the degree in the first place. Again, expecting your kids to pay their own way in life is important. Everyone has to learn that. But we're no longer in the era when you can put yourself through college with a part-time job waiting tables, and we haven't been for decades. Forcing your child to voluntarily hurl themselves into the life-ruining meat grinder our education and economic system has become because you want to buy a vacation home? Gotta go with old Ramsey on this one. That is absurd. A valedictorian with a 5.6 GPA was rejected from every top university she applied to. Seriously, is anything good enough for America's most elite universities these days? Because it certainly doesn't seem like it. But for this particular young woman, the rejection ended up leading her to a great opportunity. TikToker and Duke University student Lemmy shared this young woman's story. And it turns out she wasn't just a whiz when it came to academics. She played varsity sports, was a board member for her chapter of National Honor Society, had tons of extracurricular activities, and was even on the board of a nonprofit that serves people with mental disabilities. And and that's not even the whole list. Yet she was rejected from every top school she applied to. But it also led her to an often ignored opportunity. Honors programs at state schools. Limmy, who's made himself into something of an expert on this stuff, urged other students to look into the honors colleges at their state schools too. For starters, honors colleges at state schools are often on par with even some Ivy League universities. And they're drastically cheaper. But they also come with some really great benefits. Limmy pointed out that the dorms and food are often way better in honors colleges, but it goes far beyond that. Honors programs at state schools often include exclusive internship and research opportunities, study abroad programs, and they give access to special clubs and things like academic fraternities and sororities, which provide arguably the most important asset for any career path, networking and connections that can help you find both job and mentorship opportunities. And given that the real value of a college degree has been declining for years, not to mention the crippling burden of student debt, options like honors colleges at state schools really make a lot of sense. And dollars. Do you see what I did there? I'm very sorry. So if you're about to make the move to college, give state schools a chance. They may not be exactly what you dreamed of, but they really can be just as much of an opportunity generator for the future. A dad and a daughter are no longer speaking because he thinks his daughter sabotaged herself by going to community college for free. He wrote on Reddit that he has a college fund for each of his three kids. But if he's anything like most parents, he hasn't saved up nearly enough due to the constantly rising cost of college. The cost of a degree skyrocketed between 1980 and 2020 by 169%, and it's gone up another 4.7% since then. So when the daughter's mom told her about a program at the local community college that waives tuition entirely for students who were the first in their family to go to college, she of course jumped at the chance, and her dad did not approve at all. He refused to give his daughter her college fund and told her community college is an act of self-sabotage and insisted she follow his rule that all of his kids attend a four-year state school because he believes employers will take them more seriously if their degree is from a legitimate four-year institution. Which is true, of course. But that view of community college is really short-sighted even among the rampant elitism in today's job market. Community colleges are frequently overlooked resources that can lead to great opportunities and massive savings. Most students use community college as a launch pad to a more prestigious university anyway. And that's ultimately where your degree ends up coming from. But community colleges also come with tons of advantages. Smaller class sizes, more flexibility, and at about a third of the price, a lot less student debt. And these all allow students to prepare both academically and financially for college and their career in ways that can be really beneficial, especially for students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. The bottom line is that this dad is just flat out wrong with his take on community college. And as for sabotage, it's not so much her actions that messed up her college trajectory, but rather his his own short-sighted rules.